The U.S. economy added over 430,000 jobs in March as unemployment sunk back down to 3.6 percent, placing it just above the 50-year low of 3.5 percent reached just before March 2020. President Biden bragged that the new numbers, which reflect unemployment dropping by half since January 2021, constitute, quote, the fastest decline in unemployment to start a president's term ever recorded. Yet as the president celebrates, Americans continue to feel the strain of rapidly rising prices at the gas pump and grocery store. Bloomberg News economists recently advised their readers to set aside an extra $5,200 in their budgets this year to accommodate inflation. Joining us now to weigh in is our rising panel. Colin Rojero is a Democratic strategist and Inez Stepman is a senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum. So, Colin, how are, how are Democrats responding to this now that we're several, several months past the time when uh, there, there was hope that it would be, be trickling, be, be coming back down? Uh, it's, it's maybe not, it, you know, it's, it's plateauing, but then you have this massive uh, price spike in uh, gas prices just as you're starting to see it plateau. So how are, you know, how is the party starting to think about this as it goes into campaign season? Yeah, look, I, I have to be honest, it's a very difficult challenge for Democrats going forward, because even when you have good economic numbers and indicators, they're not necessarily translated directly into people's lives. I think if you ask people, are they happy that the unemployment is, uh, rate is lower? Sure. Uh, are they happy that the economy is adding jobs? Sure. Will it create some level of optimism? It might be helpful. But the problem is that people are seeing in kitchen table issues increased prices, and they are seeing every day when they go to the gas pump, prices that are you know almost double what they were a year ago and that's incredibly problematic when they view government as being stewards of the economy um i think what democrats have to do is talk about ways they are trying to address this problem and i think there's been an untold story here that um, democrats and the and the white house could be telling and and that is not in gross figures but in actually relatable terms okay so starbucks now pays twenty dollars an hour it didn't pay twenty dollars an hour when donald trump was president Right. It now pays twenty dollars an hour and offers college tuition. So I think there are stories there that people can tell that, you know, economic situations for people are getting individually better and that over the long term, inflation will come down. But they have to express this and they have to talk about the plan that they have to actually bring it down or it's going to be a very difficult challenge for people in the future. Democratic strategist and former campaign strategist for the Clintons, Mark Penn, wrote in Fox News over the weekend, quote, the administration's response has been to blame big business, accuse oil companies of profiteering, and to propose taxing the rich. He continues, quote, on issue after issue, Biden has had and still has the opportunity to move to the center and bring back enough suburban and independent voters to the party. So far, he has doubled down on many of his left-leaning policies. Fair, fair enough, Inez? Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, I think it's very difficult that the cultural center of the Democratic Party um, on a lot of these cultural issues, and that's that article lists, for example, immigration, education. Uh, it's not purely economic. Uh, actually, a lot of the issues that are hurting Joe Biden the worst um, in the polls are cultural issues, and it's very, very difficult for him to pivot away from those those issues or where his stances have been in those issues, which have been far from moderate. Right? He has a reputation of a moderate, I think, because of primarily of economic issues. He doesn't go, for for example, as far as Bernie Sanders. He's um, hesitating on, on a loan cancellation, right, on student loan forgiveness. So and on a lot of economic issues, he is at the center of his party, although he's to the left of the GOP, right? Uh, but on cultural issues, he's far, far to the left because that's where the center of um, Democratic voters actually are. They're just very far apart from a lot of moderates and even from a lot of um, Democrats or people who vote Democrats or have been voting for Democrats for a long time. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be very difficult. I don't I think inflation is going to be a huge problem for the Democratic Party. It's it's really right. hurting people as that fifty two hundred dollars um, is a lot of money. And it's a lot of money that people did not plan for. Um, and, and as far as the economic recovery, uh, I'm very grateful that, that we are bouncing back to February of 2020. Finally, um, after additional for, for many, many months after vaccination was freely available, um, additional uh, sort of economic restrictions after the pandemic. Nevertheless, I'm happy that we are coming back after the pandemic. We would expect the economy to rebound uh, once it's literally the chains are taken off of it. Um, but but nevertheless, that inflation is really, really making it difficult for a lot of, of American families right now. And, and as as um, as everyone's admitted, you know, that that is going to be uh, an issue for Democrats in the midterms. And so, Colin, corporate profits were, in fact, up, you know, 25 percent in the most 
recent quarter. And so if it was just the case that uh, the cost of materials and, and inflation was, uh, was driving up prices and we're in a competitive market, you'd see that eating into profits as, as firms competed with each other. Instead, you see profits exploding. And so if you have inflation that is driven by a supply chain problem, uh, by uh, labor shortage and then exacerbated by corporate profiteering, uh, what is the kind of moderate response to that that a Mark Penn would propose? It, it feels like his 1990s era prescriptions don't really fit the particular disease that, that the patient's suffering from right now. Yeah, I, I, I have, happen to agree with that. I, I think that uh, you know Mark Penn's take is a little bit revisionist and, and is coming from a mid-90s perspective. What I would say is that historically the Democratic Party has been the party of working people for working people, fighting for protections against large corporations that would exploit them. And I think this is a good messaging lane for them, talking about the fact that there are record, pro record profits and it's not being shared amongst hardworking American families and that we need to do something about that. And that we need to talk, instead of just constantly attacking business, having conversations with business to bring them to the table to help make them part of the solution is another way to look at it. We, we spend all of our time attacking corporations instead of sometimes saying, hey, let's work to improve the situations for everyday Americans and you are part of the solution. Because outside of minimum wage, the government can't really dictate how companies are going to and, and what they're going to pay. So they have to make them part of the solution. I think it's a better messaging construct to remind people that we are fighting for you and we want to bring everyone into the fold to make sure that you have a, you know, an ascendant economic purchasing power to deal with inflation and just in line with the corporate profits. We'll have to leave it there. Colin, Inez, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll have more Rising right after this.